Well, after nine days of testimony in the capital murder trial of James Staley, the prosecution and the defense rested their cases yesterday. Closing arguments are set for Monday. After that, the trial will be handed over to a jury of 12 men and women. Our team has been in Fort Worth since the very beginning of this trial, and as the verdict draws nearer now, our digital reporter Josh Hoggard has a look back at the first week of testimony. Thursday, October 11th, 2018. A family was torn apart and a community was devastated when two year old Jason Wilder McDaniel was found lifeless inside of a resident on Irving Place in Wichita Falls. Fast forward to Monday, March 13th, 2023, nearly four and a half years later, closing arguments are set to begin in the capital murder trial of the man accused of taking Wilder's life, James Irvin Staley III, right here in the Tim Curry Criminal Justice Center in Fort Worth, where it all started two weeks ago. Presiding Judge Everett Young swore in the jury on Monday, February 27th, and after Wichita County District Attorney John Gillespie read the indictment, Staley entered his plea, saying, quote, Members of the jury, I am not guilty. Prosecutor Lisa Tanner laid out the state's case summary during opening arguments, telling the jury that Wilder's use of the phrase no James later in Staley's relationship with his mother, Amber Odom McDaniel, was Wilder trying to tell people what was happening, then pled with the jury to listen to Wilder. That was followed by Staley's defense attorney, Mark Daniel, who said the state's case was inaccurate and a foul mouth and a dark sense of humor is all Staley is really guilty of. He asked the jury to find Staley innocent and put an end to this incredible nightmare. And with that, testimony officially began with Wilder's papa and Amber's stepdad, David Taylor, being the first to take the stand. He was one of two family members who testified the last words he ever heard Wilder say before he died was no James. Then after the testimony of an EMT and several WFPD personnel who responded the morning Wilder's body was discovered was a childhood friend of Staley's that was included in a derogatory group group text about Wilder. He became the first of many to testify to the court about how manipulative he knew Staley to be, something the jury would see firsthand a few days later. The former lead detective, Chad Nelson, was then called to the stand for what ended up being a marathon seven hours of testimony over two days. Staley's defense team grilled Detective Nelson for several of those hours, pointing out apparent flaws in the way the scene of Wilder's death was handled and bringing arguments about whether Wilder was too big for his crib, whether evidence should have been packaged together, and that Staley never got rid of the crib and bed even though he could have. The first of many times the jury would hear those claims by the defense. More WFPD officers took the stand on Wednesday, including Walter Vermillion, who seized a Mac Mini and HP laptop from Staley's home, something that would prove to be vital for the prosecution later in the week. On Thursday, former senior special agent with the Secret Service, Tim Allen, testified to the process by which he was able to recover deleted messages from Staley's phone. 9,751 of them, highlighting the ups and downs of the brief, volatile relationship between between Wilder's mother and Staley. Hundreds were read in open court, most of which were ridden with profanities and slurs regarding Amber's two-year-old son, Wilder. Shayla Wakefield, Amber McDaniel's older sister, testified to wrap up Thursday's proceedings, telling the jury how devastating Wilder's death was to her entire family, none more than her sister, saying, quote, Amber died with Wilder that day. Then on Friday, after consultant Jason Hawks used cell phone tower data to suggest Staley may have left his home and returned mere hours before Wilder's body was discovered, perhaps the most shocking and intense moment of the entire trial when the court was shown a GoPro video shot by Staley himself of the defendant sneaking behind a couch where Wilder was asleep, extending his arm above his head and striking the toddler hard in the face before hiding again behind the couch. A visibly stunned Wilder McDaniel can be seen waking up, crying and confused before he could be heard through tears screaming those words, funny, no James, no James. What followed in the video several moments later was Staley acting as if nothing happened, even consoling the child. The video drew tears from the gallery and the jury alike, a horrific reminder of just how high the stakes of this trial really are. Now, our team has been here since the beginning and joining me for the second week of testimony, our chief photographer and photojournalist, Curtis Jackson. Make sure that you're right back here on KFDX at six o'clock as Curtis recaps an emotional second week of testimony. And of course, we'll be right here in the auxiliary trial room A on Monday until the jury of 12 men and women reach a verdict, no matter how long that takes. Okay, Josh, thank you very much for all of y'all's coverage over the past couple of weeks. We'll see Curtis at six.